And as on the previous episode, we talked about the cylinder head and the intake manifold. The owner, John Nico, decided to jump the gun and go with an 84.5 one-up piston. So this time, this is going to be a 2-liter 8487 build. Yeah, look at those Edmel sleeves. This gives us a chance to go more in-depth with the race-modified rods that we're going to use. The ITR race-modded versions. And of course, we're going to talk about the cam and how we get the valve to valve. And of course, because this is a Blocks B, we're going to check the other stuff. And of course, the adjustments that you can do or to find how to be sure on your safety. <laughs> And as mentioned, John Nico decided to just go for the 84 or the re-sleeve from Edmel, which is a Darton style. And here's the pistons. It's 84.46, which has a built-in piston to wall, so you have to rebore it or the block 84.5. This gives you 0 0.04 piston to wall clearance in millimeters or in inches that's roughly 0 0.0015 and you can adjust the piston to wall clearance as just talk to the, your machinist or Edmel and you can, they can get you what you want. And one of the key things on Edmel is this, look at their very thick flex plate. Even Real Street uh, J Meager talks about that. And here, the Darton sleeve or the Darton style sleeve, the Edmel ones. And this defeats the need of a block card because when you think about it, this one, the sleeve, the heat, all the way to the guard by the block is all uniform because it's just one metal. Unlike the block card, when you have to stamp it onto the block, it's not the same material as the bore. So when you think about it, you're actually giving more chances to more problems than actual solutions. This is why we never run a block card because it's nothing but cooling issues when you need that. And of course, if you're gonna crack a bore, a block card would not stop that. It's still gonna crack. So why use one, right? I mean, at least for us, we don't. Okay, now onto the race modded ITR rods. We've talked about this or the origins and the history of this on the first episode. We talked about where we got the idea and where we got inspired by and what, like Mugen and all the other stuff. And so now let's go dig in into this a little further or deeper okay here we are you can see okay we've got the gloves back on because we don't want this rusting all right here's the rod cap i see it behind it we got a polish that oh, actually we did polish it and this way we can get the weight all even without really you know just showing all the grinds and here let me show you the beam uh, this is what they call the rod beam or the beam of the rod this this part or this surface and you see one of the reasons why we smooth this is because if you can imagine the texture of the oem connecting rod if you actually superimpose a side view of it 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 looks like it's wavy or wrinkled right and that may cause the origin of a potential bending or cracking here's the small end that's when you get the adjustments of the weight end for end or for center to center, each end, you know, and then ultimately balancing the overall weight. Okay, let me remove the rod cap here and show you guys. Okay, here, As you can see, it's not, I'm not saying it's easy to do this. It's just that, you know, every chance we get to actually fine tune the engine, even on the weight, we'll go for that. Because, you know, this is something that I haven't shown like before, but I've been doing this for personal engines for years now, you know, and, you know, I have no back to back test on this, but hey, all the engines that I did with this on actually did really good, including Jasper, aka ECU Later's B20 VTEC. So, hey, who knows, right? And the reason why, the other reason, sorry, about why we polish this or, or the reason for it is because when you think about it, there's, a, there's such a thing called a crank scraper, right? It removes oil. And this 
actually helps detach oil from sticking on the surface. And you know, every little bit helps create power. Here they are. All right, looking good, looking good. And we're gonna weigh this and compare it to a B18C H beam rod, but probably on the next episode because we busted our one kilogram gram scale. We just have the 500 now. But the one thousand gram digital gram scale is on order. So don't worry, we're gonna get to that soon. Now let's get to the head and go with the valve to valve now. Okay, here we are now. You can see the rock arm, the VTEC is locked. So it's all together. The primary, the secondary, and the VTEC rock arm, and as well as the exhaust. Yes, sir. Okay, now we drop in the cams. With time lapse, this is gonna get boring. So it's the cam caps on it, and the cam rail. All right, hand tight. We get really snug and tight enough. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we drop in the cam gears here. The Golden Eagle adjustable cam gear. Yeah. All right, you can see here it's advanced one on the intake and it's advanced one as well on the exhaust. And you can see here, it's not two because if you look at number two, the, the, the second one is not aligned except for one. So wait, let me remove the cam gears and show you guys better okay here we are now okay we actually cheated we actually cleaned the cam gear so that you know we can show you better okay now here you can see on the intake we loosen this up it's all clean and good and you can see wait let me let me loosen this to show you guys because i know everyone else in the u.s already know how to adjust it or to check this but locally i hear people say it's confusing and whatnot this is a vernier type cat uh cam gear so it's not like one line per degree okay let me show you now see on is it's on zero it's aligned right so if you want to advance it to one you have to align the number one line the inner uh, inner line and the outer line on the number one has to you know match in the same line so there that's advanced one degree okay so now if you're gonna try to retard it let's try to show you we align it to the inner line on the retard to the outer line that's number one wait oh not went over we slowly oh crap oh sorry 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 there you go okay now you can see it's retard one degree okay now again now let's see if we advance it to plus two advance on the intake so we align the second line or the number two line to the outer there see so now we go back to put it zero okay wait. there oh no it moved sorry let's put it back to zero all right okay yes sir now it's back to zero. We tighten it so that, you know, when we start strapping it on the belt, it doesn't spin. Here, it's on zero also. So, yep, it's ready to go. Okay, now let's strap the belt onto the cam gears on the cams. Okay, now here we are. The reason why we do this is it's to replicate how the both intake and exhaust cam gears turn or spin as it's assembled with the engine and the crank itself so you know instead of building the whole thing we can do this and replicate the rotation for each cycle and see the valve to valve if there's contact and we have a video of valve to valve that we did last year but let us know in the comment section if you want us to make an even better version now i mean i'm pretty sure now we can make a more in-depth video that shows clearly Oh yeah, and before we get carried away, aside from subscribing to the channel and liking the video, if you noticed initially the picture we showed you earlier, the one with the B16B heading to Edmel, you can see there's a single overhead cam block that's just finished from the machine shop. That's going to the owner's friend, Oliver. He owns Unknown Auto Works in Valenzuela. So that's around maybe like a less than an hour away from us. And they cover paint works, body works, even engine swaps. So it's a good place to go. They actually did the 
engine removal for this B16B. So John, Nico, and Oliver, they just brought the engine to us. So of course, when we're finished with it, they will handle the installation and the start up. And remember in episode one, I told you guys, the owner of the B16B has a friend that has a B22 liter with Pro 3 and also an ultra street manifold with custom made spacer. So that's gonna be really, really good, right? That's owned by Oliver, the shop, the owner of the shop, Unknown Auto Works. Hey, when you think about it, this is such a cool name, right? Okay, now let's continue. Okay, now we tilt the head. This is why we tape up or with the masking tape the deck of the of the head because it's already resurfaced and we don't want to scratch it and plus to avoid any oil debris or whatnot that would hamper gasket sealing. You can see we sealed it up with the masking tape. This way it's always safe. This is a 0 0.020 and 0 0.022. So that's gonna be 0 0.044 clearance this is what we're shooting for for valve to valve for safety you know we can go point with point zero forty, but hey on every rev limiter time that you hit the belt spikes up and that might you know hit up the valves okay now here okay now the intake is opening oh shoot it won't even fit any filler gauge look let me put it close to you guys Look at that. That's almost touching. Let, let's focus on the other one, on the other valve. There, and this is zero on the intake and zero on the exhaust. Okay, this is a different block speed that we've used before. This one seems like it's a big version or, you know, a pro version, yeah. Okay, so now we, we, we revert the turn that we did so that, you know, the intake and the exhaust valve would close. This way, when we adjust the cam gear, we don't start bending the valve on the desk, okay? We'll make sure everything is closed up. This way, it doesn't hit the desk or the workbench. All right, we now keep going, keep going. Okay, once the intake closes, yes, sir. All right, double check, make sure it's all closed. Yep, yep, okay, now we can turn this slowly and don't, you know, don't squash your fingers or your hands. That's gonna hurt the hell. Okay, careful. Okay, there. Okay, now we're gonna adjust the exhaust. We advance it to two degrees. And of course, that we will time lapse because it's gonna be a little bit boring. All right, there. Okay, let me show you guys. Okay, the intake remains at zero. Okay, and the exhaust that you can see is advanced two degrees all right okay now let's go okay now we tilt the head again this way we can check on the valves as they open and close okay careful careful there all right so now can you guys see it yep yep okay now you can see it all right now we turn it the exhaust will open first and then the intake and then we'll see the valve to valve gap or distance if it's safe enough or you know we need more okay there now the intake is gonna open slowly as the exhaust closes and guys this is how you drop a valve when they hit each other yep you know one of them or both of them are not going back okay wait what the hell it's still the same it's, it's like it's still too close okay this is starting to look like a pro 2 or a skunk 2 pro 2 cam or pro series cam this this is interesting and of course we're gonna eventually degree this so we will find out every single detail but now we try it even further now it's zero on the intake and now it's plus four on the exhaust you can see one two three four okay and actually we did try this i didn't record it but it was still a little too close for comfort so now i have to double check everything and I actually compare this with the pro 3 cam so on the next video we will make it up for you guys we will make it up by showing the valve to valve clearances on this one and reinstall on the same head and cam gear our pro 3 on the shelf and to show you guys the difference on how big it is or how big it changes 
This way it gives you a faint idea on how serious a Pro 3 has to be to install and in, in order for you guys to run properly. Yep. And so of course, as we try to work on this and see what's the difference or what's making this reading off, you can watch this valve to valve clearancing video that we did last year. You can click here or of course it will be in the description below. This will give you time until we get to showcase this and compare it to the Pro 3 and this blocks B. And of course, get updates or give you updates on Edmel's status on receiving the block hey and many more including the header so hey if you want to binge watch more stuff of course you can always click here